to another episode of the Red Arrow Health and Wellness Podcast. I am your host, Marco, with my lovely co-host... Jessica! How's it going, Jessica? It's going really well. How are you, Marco? I'm great. What are you drinking over there, Jessica, in that really fun bottle? I am drinking a glass of Lake Michigan Shore white wine. It was aged in rum barrels. It's from Red Top Winery down in Baroda? Yeah, they're in Baroda. Yeah. Very yummy. What are you drinking, Marco? I'm having a try not to suck. (laughs) No, seriously, that's the name of the beer, Try Not to Suck. It's uh, Joe Madden's Try Not to Suck from Haymarket Brewing Company out of uh, Chicago and Bridgman, Michigan. Uh, Hopefully they're going to keep making this. I don't know. I mean, they had a nice Chicago tie-in when he was with the Cubs. He's no longer with the Cubs. Uh, But I do like this beer. It also supports the Rags of Honor uh, charity, which uh, uh, gives support to veterans, as well as Joe Madden's Respect 90 Foundation that he and his wife started to help out kids and give them support and skills and opportunities. And it tastes good. And it's funny. This is one of my favorite beers to drink at the rink, (laughs) like up against the glass and just turn the can. So as the people are skating by and you know, they're between plays and they're trying to see what are you drinking and the can just says, try not to suck. <laughs> Sums up adult sports altogether. Hilarious. It has a pretty can. It is a pretty can and it has glasses all over it because Joe, of course, is known for his uh, many, many, many styles of glasses. Nice. Yeah. So, cheers. Cheers. So, what's new? Well, we did Kids Meal again, which we're getting pretty good feedback on that. People seem to be interested in this whole Kids Meal thing and how it's going and if our kids still have all their fingers. They do. We did it. Well, spoiler. Uh, Yeah, they do have all their fingers. All of them have all their fingers. Hooray! Uh, We did it again this week. The kids sat down. They had to put together a menu. Kid 3 was in charge of the main entree, and he decided, well, first he wanted to do chicken wings, but he doesn't like all the breading on them. So I'm like, all right, man, you want like skin on... Uh, either crisp them up. We were going to do them in the oven, but then he liked them how we had done them a while ago where I put them in the deep fryer. Mm -hmm. So as much as our, uh, we have a friend who's a dietitian is going to cringe at the thought of this. We pulled out the deep fryer from the basement, took it out on the deck. We deep fried, uh, the chicken and wings. The wing selection was just not looking good. They were either frozen or yeah, I'm looking, I'm like, yeah, it doesn't look good. So we did drumsticks. We got chicken legs. So we took the chicken legs, we put it in the fryer for 10 minutes, pull them out, threw them in a bowl. He threw in some seasoning. He went through the spice aisle and the barbecue aisle and he decided he didn't want them saucy. He wanted more of a dry rub. Mm -hmm. So we picked some seasoning. He threw it in the bowl, tossed it around. It's a big bowl. So you could give him a toss, (laughs) put him on the paper towel, do the next batch. I was watching him closely so he didn't get hurt. Uh, But they turned out great. They were fantastic. Yeah. I love them. The kids, oh my god, they ate so many of them. Oh, I know. Kid number one ate four. Yes. Yeah. Kid number two ate kid two, two kid, which is a big deal for him. Kid three ate three. <laughs> and kid four had half a one because she's three and picky. But they were pretty big. It, yeah, they were. They were so in the big size legs. Kid one made corn on the cob. She went and she picked out her corn on the cob, uh, cleaned it up, and then uh, she boiled it. So she had a, we helped her with a pot of water, put it on, seasoned the water with salt and whatever else she found off the spice rack. There's some Cajun seasonings and whatnot going in there. Threw in the corn for about 20 minutes, big tongs to pull them out, put them on a platter, good to go. Kid four cut up veggies. <laughs> And she used the big plastic knives we've talked about before. They have the scallop edge. It has no sharp edges. And really what she did was she cut up celery because then we didn't even go with baby carrots. We went with petite carrots, Mm -hmm. the super tiny baby carrots already cut up in a bag. So she had to open the bag and dump it on the platter. Oh, no. She chopped up some of those carrots. Oh, did she? She did. I didn't see the chopped ones. Well, she chopped them up and she put them on the platter and then she ate them. Oh, Before everybody came to the table. Well, I was outside. (laughs) Uh... But <laughs> she did cut up the celery because as I was coming in and out a few times, she was working on that celery. And then kid two, kid two wanted dessert again this week. And he went through our kid's cookbook and found a chocolate cake. It was supposed to have chocolate chips in it, but he had chocolate chunk morsels in it, some sweet morsels in it. Mm-hmm. Made the whole thing from scratch. Meant a lot of work with fractions. 
Right, so he's oh. better at fractions now, so that's exciting. A lot of attention to detail because there's a difference between a tablespoon and a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. It turned out great. I even tried some. It turned very out little perfectly. Bit. Oh. It's super chocolatey and it's very, super very rich. rich. You yes. can't have more than a tiny piece of it, otherwise you're going to need a gallon of milk. Wash it down, but he's very proud of himself. I'm proud of all of them. They put it together because they didn't bread up the chicken with flour and you know wet and dry uh, mixes. We were able to have drumsticks. Yeah, and we ate the same thing they did. We could have celery and carrots. Uh, we had corn, no, I didn't actually have corn on the cob. Did you? I did because I was starving. We swam so I swam so much that day, and I I don't think that I ate breakfast or lunch. And Just I, God. I know. I know. I didn't mean to. I was working on some things. Um, but yeah, we got to dinner and I was like, I want all the food. I did have a sliver of the cake. There was a, an end piece. I'm like, all right, I'm going to, I'm not going to have a piece, but I am going to sliver this off to see what it tastes like. It was so good. <laughs> so not good for me, but it was so good. He did a great job. And on Monday, we had some great news. Oh yeah? What was that? Michigan has lifted the stay at home order. Woo! Yay! Restrictions are relaxing. And unfortunately, there's still no hockey, but we're all headed in the right direction. And fingers crossed that COVID-19 numbers don't surge with the reopening oh, of I'm restaurants hoping. and bars. I went out to mow the lawn on Monday, and I come back in, and my phone is blowing up. <laughs> Does this mean we get to play hockey? What's going on? And it's like, okay, what are you guys talking about? So I go, I look at the order, and like, first off, clearly the people who are hitting me up on text, email, social media on my personal accounts because of my role as hockey commissioner didn't read any of the news articles they just read the headlines <laughs> because if they had read the details uh fitness centers activity centers like and whatnot can open up for outdoor socially distant activities mm -hmm. does not work for ice rinks in michigan we cannot play ice hockey in michigan especially lower michigan i mean the up there it's frozen up there it's tundra <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get angry you for letters for that one. Uh, but in lower Michigan in June, we're not playing ice hockey outside. No. So as of right now, we can't open, but it's a great signing. We're heading in the right direction. And as long as people aren't stupid and cause the numbers to spike and then our governor to lock back down on us, maybe we can return to life outside of the house. We shall see. It'd be nice. I still miss my favorite form of cardio. Hockey. 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 My home away from home. Yeah. I miss your hockey too. Because you watch your chick flicks and lifetime movies. I watch and... my chick flicks and nobody squawks at me and nobody says, oh, this is so boring. I hate it. That's usually your lifetime movies. Right. They're terribly good. They're terribly the same plot every it time. It doesn't matter. Just background. Overly movies. predictable with like bad acting and washed up actors. Right. It's awesome. How could you not love it? When is Nicolas Cage going to appear in one of these? He's desperate for money. <laughs> His career is washed up. Well, they keep giving him actual movies. Straight to video, which actually, I guess everything's kind of straight to video right now. It is. But uh, you, you think, I mean, he would show up on Lifetime pretty soon now. I think that he might actually be a little bit too weird for Lifetime. He's a weird guy. He is a weird guy. Anyway, uh, it's also the first week of summer vacation. School is done. It's thrilling. Thrilling. We gave the kids a week off from, because, you know, you can't take the whole summer off from everything. Otherwise, you have that that slide heading into the following academic year. But we gave them a week off from just the demands and the scheduling just to kind of hang loose with minimal instruction. Like, they still have to clean their rooms. <laughs> they still have to do the dishes. They still have to set the table. But not really placing a lot of demands on them. Partly to give us a mental break, too. I need a break. Especially you. <laughs> but now that we're into summer vacation, that kind of leads into now what? Because we don't want them to get bored. We don't want them to have that slide back. We still want them to have fun. And that's what our main feature tonight is going to be Yep. when we get to that in a few minutes. It's going to be so fun. But first, the Red Arrow Challenge update. So we currently have 110 members. Awesome. We're growing. Week 7 is done, and week 8 is in progress. The grade 8. Yeah. So here are week 7 champs. Swimming. 9 and under was Vivian. Vivian kicked butt. 
for a, someone who's not even nine years old yet, she did 17,720 meters. That's amazing. That is amazing. If we look back through our summer racing club, which was preceded this, still not a record out of a kid, but wow, she kicked butt most in the entire club all week by anybody, any age. Yep. 10 to 19 was Soleil. 20 to 29 was Gator Boy. He beat out H. Kaner 305 this week in swimming. Ooh. And Gator Boy was probably listening to the podcast and lit a fire <laughs> under him. 30 to 39, Mrs. Coach. 40 to 49, Coach T. No 50 to 59 year olds got in the pool or the lake or the ocean or the pond or the swimming hole. Uh-huh. 60 to 69, Kilogram Ill. Running. Nine and under was Yellow Ninja. Ten to nineteen was Soleil. Twenty to twenty-nine was H. Kaner three hundred five. Thirty to thirty-nine was Helmet eighty-five. Forty to forty-nine was LL Sign thirty-five, and fifty to fifty-nine was J. Mar. Walking. Nine and under was Little Marsh. Ten to nineteen was Allie. Twenty to twenty-nine was Smitha. 30 to 39 year olds, I guess, forgot how to walk. There's <laughs> nobody reported anything. 40 to 49, Vino Mia. 50 to 59, Bill. 60 to 69, Kilogram Ill. And 70 to 79, No No Don. Biking on road. Nine and under was Sunny C. 10 to 19 was Allie. 20 to 29 was Gator Boy. 30 to 39, Cyclopath. 40 to 49, try, try again. 50 to 59, A.R. Miller. 60 to 69, the notorious Kilogram Ill. And 70 to 79, No No Don. Biking off road. Nine and under, Alina 2010. 10 to 19, Sadie 20 or 2009. I don't know, 20, 2009? I think 2009. Whatever, Sadie 2009. <laughs> 20 to 29 is a tie yet again between Smytha and Super Mario. Oh. I'm still sticking by my theory that they know each other and work out together. Probably. 40 to 49, Cyclone. And 50 to 59, Mrs. Golden. Those 30 to 39 year olds are pretty lame. <laughs> Sit down paddling. 9 and under was Morgan 33. 10 to 19, Baby Sensei. 20 to 29, Gator Boy. The Gator Boy's got to like, come back with a vengeance. Mm-hmm. 30 to 39, we're lame. That's not a username. They just didn't do anything. 40 to 49, A. Palomino. And 50 to 59, A.R. Miller. Stand up paddling. 20 to 29, H. Kaner 305. 30 to 39, nothing. 40 to 49, Peetster. And Peetster was first overall this week in uh, stand up paddling with 6.4 kilometers. Wow. 50 to 59, A.R. Miller. And 60 to 69, Kilogram Ill. Cross-country skiing. 40 to 49, El Tiburon 95. 50 to 59, Big Juan 64. And I'm sticking with my theory that I think these two own Nordic Tracks or one of those skiing machines. I would hope so at this point. It's well, true. I mean, they could be in the lower hemispheres or we up in Nordic countries. <laughs> skating. 10 to 19, JoJo. 20 to 29, H. Kaner 305. And 40 to 49, Great One. And of course, we should mention 30 to 39, nobody. Hockey. Hockey was very much like the 30 to 39 year olds in many of the categories. Nobody did anything because everything shut down. Points. Nine and under was Vivian for the fifth week. Wow. Not in a row, but her fifth week, she has been the champ. Awesome. 10 to 19, Soleil. Soleil's on top in points for the first time, and she barely beat out Allie. Wow. And and we actually know Allie. She's mm-hmm. pretty competitive, so it'll be interesting. She's not going to like this. No. Well, but she's also, I know for a fact that she's dialing it back a little bit because she's a cross-country runner, and she doesn't want to peak in the summer. So, you know, my advice to her was, okay, only do so much running. And then go swim, bike. And you know she shows up in a lot of the categories. So Mm -hmm. she is doing that. But having uh, username Soleil come in ahead of her, that's just going to motivate her more. She's super competitive. She's a very nice person, but she is competitive. 
20 to 29 was Gator Boy. Gator Boy's on top for the third time. 30 to 39, Helmet 85 on top for the fifth time. 40 to 49, Try Try Again takes his third, I assume it's a him, it could be a her, takes their third crown. 50 to 59, A.R. Miller for the sixth time has a championship. 60 to 69, for the fifth time in that age category, Kilogram Ills on top. <laughs> and 70 to 79 with a club record seventh points championship for the age division no no don Woo! there's not a lot of competition in that one it's no no don and one other person it's okay he's beating the other person that's all that matters doing better than the 80 to 89 division where there's nobody up there it's true and nobody in our 90 and over division yeah and then there were the feature members. Like, for me, I swam, I ran, and I walked. Uh, I actually didn't get on my bike at all after that really big week. But I was really enjoying the pool. Yeah, it's been hot. Uh, I, I won in running and walking against you, which wasn't too hard because you didn't run and you didn't walk. I did not. I came close to swimming with you. I mean, we both did over a 5K. We did a lot of swimming this past week. I mean, we did a 5K of swimming and then kept on going. Mm-hmm. I did swimming. You did a lot of swimming. So I won swimming this week. Yay me! And I won points. <laughs> As for week eight, which we still have several days left in week eight, how's your week eight going? Not so great. My back is still being wonky. I have a sciatic pain that runs down my leg. Yay! Yes, it's exciting. And it um, actually hurts when I stand and it hurts when I walk. So I am not doing those things very much right now. But I can get in the pool and swim, and I have been swimming my tail off. How's your week eight going? Week eight's going okay. Uh, it's one of those ones where where we're at right now, if I finish strong into the weekend and through the weekend, it'll be a great week. And if I get sucked into the computer or doing other stuff or working on the yard, it could be a lousy week. Uh, but it's got a great start. It has great potential. A lot of dis- A lot of laps in the pool. A lot of running miles in this week. Have yet to be on my bike again. I need to get back on. We've got a virtual. Actually, I've got two different virtual races next week. One's a multi-sport, which is going to be a swim, bike, run, kayak. Oh. Yeah, a quad. And the other one's just a straight-up 5K. And then I also uh, have to do that virtual 5K with kid number one's going to run the 5K. Mm -hmm. So that's actually an almost like an extra 5k for me because i'm gonna have to go run walk so and much running. i know so much virtual racing which ties into the last podcast it we does. did so if you haven't listened to that one it's go a, listen to it yeah the main feature was all about virtual racing but as for a week eight how's it going to turn out you'll just have to tune into the next podcast to find out As we dive into our main feature tonight, we, we've spoken about this before. When we set up this enterprise as Red Arrow Health and Wellness, we wanted to look at physical health, physical wellness, mental health, mental wellness for the whole family, everybody, all ages. And we do spend a lot of time on the physical, especially fitness, weight loss, competition, diet, nutrition, all that. But we do like from time to time to also work on mental health, mental wellness, staying not just physically active, but mentally active. And of course, we've got kids. We have four kids. And so part of that mental well-being uh, for the adults is keeping the kids occupied and entertained for the summer. And also it's great for their cognitive development to keep them working, keep them doing something, but also try to make it fun so they want to. So it's not like, oh, no, don't, not more work. <laughs> so they feel like they're playing games, but they're also not going to encounter that giant slide when they get back into school in terms of academics. So to that end, Jessica <laughs> is here with, who's, I mean, she's really great at all of this. With Thanks. ideas on what to do with the kids over the summer. So, Jessica, what are we doing with the kids? So, first off, I want to talk about a routine. I think that everybody should have a routine. I think that it helps to 
keep your kids sort of grounded and it keeps them on a schedule and they know what to expect. Their eyes pop open and they think, oh, it's morning. Now it's time for me to do X, Y, and Z. And it's the same thing every day. And it provides a sense of calm. It provides a sense of security for them because nothing is out of order. Everything is the way that it is supposed to be, which in the summertime is really important because we don't have our school time routine. It's different in the summer. There's no expectation of, I have to go to school. I have to do all of my homework. I have to do this and that. So, and that's not to say you can't improvise and have right. fun, and but it's, it's kind of like the base operating system. It's like when in doubt, fall back to the schedule. Right. So I want to talk about the routine that we do in our house Monday through Friday. Sometimes we do it on the weekends too, but usually just during the week. We take about two hours to do all of these things. Sometimes three hours. It depends on how slowly they're moving. But the gist of it is the kids get up, they have breakfast. They brush their teeth, they get dressed. And then they sort of rotate between someone getting on the treadmill or doing whatever exercises are necessary for their sport of interest. So, for example, kid number one has to do goalie exercises three times a week. All three of the big kids have to do taekwondo exercises twice a week. They're all in the racing club, and if we were told them, like, oh, you have to run or you have to, you know, do this as, like, a chore, they would hate it. But they love seeing the leaderboards, and they're also the Red Arrow Challenge. They like those leaderboards. They like seeing how they stack up. They love, for the racing club, beating their friends, because that one's listed by the actual names and not just the usernames. Mm -hmm. And so that they love. Plus, the older kids take their uh, iPods down there and watch movies while they're on the treadmill. They do. James Bond is the current favorite. (laughs) All right. So after they exercise, they need to read for 30 minutes. And then... Uh, Spoiler alert. Sometimes when they say set the alarm for me, I set it for like 45 to an hour. Me too. Oh, good. (laughs) No, I have been doing that for weeks. (laughs) So I... (laughs) No, but I mean, the minimum is 30 minutes. Right. Everybody reading at least 30 minutes every day. I don't care what you read. You could read a magazine. You could Were read... you, like, incrementally sneaking it farther and farther? Like, I was doing 30 because I was required for school, and then I made it 35, and then I made it 40, and I snuck it up. But now it's kind of bounces all over. I don't know if I incrementally did it. I just sort of let Actually, him go. Actually, Kid 2 asks me to set an alarm, and I don't. Because even when I tell him he's done, he keeps on reading. Because he's into the Harry Potter books. Yes. He's flying through the Harry Potters. Yep. Anyway, so, you okay. were saying. Sorry. So, after they do their reading, they have to fill out a reading log. And this is a very simple list of what they read. It's basic information. It's a title, the pages and the chapters they read, and whether or not they finished the book. And then inside of the log, they have to write like a paragraph on what the story was about that day. And the logs for each of the kids are different. They're geared towards their ages. So for kid number three, he has to write like two sentences about what he read, and then he has to draw a picture describing what he saw in his head inside of the book. And kid number three is lower elementary. Right. He's going into second grade, so this is totally appropriate for him. Kid number one and two have to answer, like, very specific questions depending on what day of the week it is. So Monday it could be, tell me about a conflict that the main character had with a supporting character in whatever chapters they read that day. They don't love this, but I think that it's a good mental exercise for them, and I think that it pushes them, and it's it's helping develop those writing skills, and everybody needs practice with their writing skills. Well, and especially kid one, who's heading into middle school, Yeah. and I know the English teacher over at middle school over there, and she's very good, but she is going to push that entire group, and this will help our kid, and any of your classmates who do the similar thing. So if they ever tune into our podcast, hint, hint, uh, it's going to help them a lot because they are going to have to do this kind of stuff Mm -hmm. in a few months. Yeah, and kid number two is going into fourth grade. And I know that book reports in fourth grade are a really big deal. They have to do like a ton. So this is good practice for him. Well, and they're not even just the standard book report format. Some are like, make a movie trailer. I mean, he's going to love it. He will absolutely love that. But this is just good practice for writing out his thoughts and what he thinks about things and pinpointing specific things in the story that he read that are of note. So, all right. So after they do the log, then they have to do their assigned schoolwork for the day. And this sounds like a lot, but I swear it isn't. 
It's just a few worksheets so they can stay sharp on the skills that they learned over the previous school year. Um, I, I do this because I don't want them to have a lot of backward slide when they go back to school in the fall. I hate that. And I know that it makes them feel bad when they don't do well on their, their like pre-test that the teachers give them at the beginning of the year. So I'm trying to prevent that for them. Well, we just spent, we spent a lot of time with the kids every year, not just in this crazy year where fourth quarter was like at home. We spent all that time working with them to help them uh, acquire all those skills mm -hmm. that it, you know, we don't want to watch them lose all the ground they, they've right. gained because, you know, while we're working with them, they're putting in a lot of hard work and effort to make those achievements because ultimately they're the ones learning it. We mm -hmm. already know it. <laughs> um, so with, with this, usually in the summer, I'll have like a lot of worksheets for them, usually somewhere between four and six, and it will cover all areas, all subject areas. This year, I've decided to sort of step it back a little bit and just sort of focus the worksheets on the areas that they really need to improve on. So kid number one, her worksheets are going to be math worksheets because that's where she struggled the most. Kid number two needs to work on his reading comprehension and his math skills. So his worksheets will involve those two things. And then kid number three just needs a general overview because he is ridiculously brilliant. And where are you getting the sheets from? I ordered uh, workbooks. I ordered workbooks online. You can get them for every single subject, for every single grade. There are multiple companies that make them, so you find one that suits your needs and your age level that your kid is on and, and order it. Um, if, if in doubt, you could always contact your child's teacher and see who they recommend. They always have great recommendations. Did you order anything for kid four? You know what? We have a lot of preschool workbooks already, so she can just have the giant stack of those and work her way through those. But or those when, are... it, when in doubt, just get a coloring book. Yeah. I mean, they're they're basically coloring and learning to hold a pencil and... Stickers. Put the sticker in the right shape. There Good you go. times. All right. So that is what our days look like in the mornings. And then we have the afternoons for fun things. And I'm going to give you some of those fun things now. So the first thing that I have on my list is a scavenger hunt. And the materials, this is just a general materials. You'll have to, you know, you might need to modify it based on what exactly you decide to do with your kids. But basic materials are paper, pencil, imagination for clues, things to find and knowledge of your area that you live in, and maybe a phone with a camera or a digital camera. So for prep, Or a tablet. Or a, a tablet. Yeah. I mean, if you want, carry your laptop around if it has a camera. It really doesn't matter. It's just a fun way to sort of record what you did for the day. So for preparation, you can do this. You can do scavenger hunts a couple different ways. You can make a list of things that the kids have to find, and you can do this inside your house or outside of your house. So inside of your house, your scavenger hunt might look like find something red, find something bumpy, find something that you eat. Just generic categories that you can work with. Perfect for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. Way more fun than if dad had put together a scavenger hunt, which would be, where are dad's keys? Where are my sunglasses? I can't find my wallet. Your scavenger hunt. Sucks. Where's my cell phone? <laughs> it's a little bit more like down to earth, real life. Okay, I prefer mine because it's more fun. I prefer yours, too. It's more fun. Yeah. All right. So you can um, you can start with the really general categories like that, and then you can start to make it a little bit more specific to things that are around inside of your actual house or around your yard. and Or maybe you make a scavenger hunt that is specific to inside family jokes or family activities that you like to do. You could make a list of certain types of things, like you can do an animal scavenger hunt. This this would be best if like you're going for a walk in your neighborhood or you're walking around downtown or somewhere new to you. You could take this list with you and, and mark them off as you see them. So like maybe you make an animal list and the animals on your list are a dog, a cat, a squirrel, birds, snakes, chipmunks, whatever you want, whatever's common in your area. Maybe one or two that are uncommon in, the, in your area. If you have multiple kids, could you also make different bingo sheets? Absolutely. That would be amazing. Bingo, I love it. Scavenger hunt bingo. Um, or maybe if your kids are really into birds, kid number two loves birds, and I think he would love to do a scavenger hunt where he has to identify, has to mark off all of the birds on the list. So maybe it's got robins and blue jays and woodpeckers, 
and sparrows and finches. Cardinals, hawks. Yeah. All turkeys. Of, all we have wild turkeys. And you, know, you could... The actual birds, not, you know, empty whiskey bottles, but we have wild turkeys come running through our yard and coming out of the ravine. We have all kinds of critters here. But you could also add some other bird-related things like bird eggs and nests. We have a lot of those happening in our yard right now, so they're pretty fun to spot. What's the latest one? The doves? Doves are making a nest right outside of our bedroom window. It's going to be magical. <laughs> yeah, you better hope it's magical and not like... <laughs> it's going to be a nightmare. Birds flying nightmare. into the window and... Aww. I don't know. Look, we've had so many birds flying into the window this year, the, the various windows of the house this year, or just playing like poop on the windows this year. Like I, the time we've been in this house, I don't remember having so many windows in need of cleaning on the outside. I mean, the inside are always covered in little kid fingerprints, mm-hmm. usually like down low, knee high to waist high. Yep. But yeah. Anyway. So maybe. Another idea might be if you really want your children to learn what types of plants are growing in your yard, you could make them a scavenger hunt that has just different types of plants on it, like rhododendrons and pansies and roses and irises and gladioles and hydrangeas, apple trees, cherry cheese trees, whatever you Oaks, have. maples. Yeah. Like, poison ivy. Just go for a walk in your yard, make a list of Maybe not poison ivy. Well, poison ivy would be good to learn. Poison ivy would be great so that they can learn to identify it and then avoid it. Yes. Um. For a modification for younger kids who aren't as familiar with these animals or plants, or for kids who aren't great at reading yet, you could add a small picture to your list in addition to the words, and that way they can put the picture to the actual object in the world and then mark it off that way. This way it's all-inclusive and everybody in the family can play. If you know that you're going to be in a certain area, you could do a little research on the area and make a scavenger hunt list beforehand and print it off and then take it with you or you could download it to your phone like turn it into a pdf and just have it on your smartphone and use um mark off those things as you find them when you're walking around the the place that you went to visit and if you've got your smartphone with you you can always take pictures of your kids with the treasures that they find on their scavenger hunt speaking of smartphones you could if you have Older kids, a fun idea, like older kids who can drive, a fun idea for them might be a a selfie scavenger hunt where they have their list of things around town and they have to go and find it, find them and then take a picture with all of those items. Actually, that could work with the younger kids if they've got something mobile where they can take pictures while you're out and if you, especially if you split up into groups. Yeah. Or I was thinking if you are a family and you have a babysitter or a nanny and you're comfortable letting them drive your kid around, this could be a really fun day trip that gets them out of the house and gone for a couple of hours while they're exploring town and finding all of these hidden treasures on their list. And, and then they done, take, things done at home. Exactly. You can get things done at home or you can like get work done. But they'll also be taking pictures and you'll get to see what they did all day long when you get home from work or... Especially the um, as selfies, like there's exactly there's an oak tree, and it's a selfie, so you got all these pictures of your kid. Yeah, or maybe like you have a list of local restaurants that they have to go to, and they have to stand in front of the sign for those. It's you know something something fun, something silly. I mean, I do something similar with my runners, but part of that also is getting them to learn specific landmarks around town. Mm-hmm. So then, when we do routes, and they're you know looking for landmarks where the turns are. They know where they are because we do this every year and it's not like blindly running in because a lot of times they come and they get on the team and there's a sixth grader and it's like, okay, we're going to go down this road or that road. So like, I don't know where the roads are. I'm like, well, there's these things, they're green and they have words, they're called street signs. (laughs) But all the routes, I list the directions with street names, but also with landmarks. I'm like, I don't know how to get anywhere. I just sit in the back seat and play on my phone and... My mom or my dad drive me everywhere. So once they start running and especially doing the selfie scavenger hunt, they learn where these landmarks are. And then from there, we can learn routes and running and we get into more traditional tra- cross country. But even as a senior in high school, they all love the selfie scavenger hunt. Yeah, it's one of the most popular ones. It is the most popular. I ask when they sign up, oh. what's your favorite of our special runs? And we do a special run every week of the season, last year and this year. And those are the only two seasons I've ask the question formally on the sign-up form. Mm -hmm. Selfie scavenger hunt on top. Oh. By an overwhelming majority. What, you thought it was going to be the color run? I did. That's in second place. (laughs) 
But Selfie Scavenger Hunt has got twice as many I mean, boats as Color Run. Selfies are super fun. Some of the kids aren't too wild about getting dirty. I mean, they all like it, but... Oh, the Color Run. For the Color Run, but <laughs> the... Yeah, because they, they all love the Selfie Scavenger Hunt, and it's big bragging rights on it. Mm-hmm. Foster that in my your family if uh, you got a competitive family. Selfies. <laughs> okay. So for my next thing, I have teach them a new skill or learn a new skill together. And just some general ideas on this are like you could learn knitting or sewing or scrapbooking or pottery, wood, wood burning, cooking, photography, like any of the crap. <laughs> Sorry, wood burning? People do it. It's a thing. It's called arson. No, you know, with the... um. Oh, the artwork where you're like engraving yeah, almost in wood. Like with... you write your name on a picture. Yeah, my something. dad used to have one of those, those wood burning pens. Yes. That was like, oh, he's, like, I couldn't believe he was letting us play with this in elementary school. Right, but it's it's a thing. You can get them at the hardware store. It's a fun thing you could do. Yeah. Okay, so materials for this are going to depend on whatever skill you try and teach. So I wrote out a thing for knitting, and we'll just go over that one real quick. So for knitting, basic things that you're going to need are knitting needles. I like the straight needles in a size US 6 or 8 for new niddle. New niddles? <laughs> niddles. Oh, it has been a long day. <laughs> we're not leaving this. You know, no, we're leaving this in. <laughs> You know, the past few episodes we've, like, recorded in the morning or earlier in the day. Uh, but we're finally, like, we're not on the deck. We're back in our normal uh, recording space at a very normal time, which means the kids are in bed. It's been a long day. We actually, after dinner, went swimming. Mm-hmm. After everything else we did, the workouts today, the work today, keeping the kids happy today. And apparently your wine's good. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so now you're Size. doing knitting needles. Size US 6 or 8 knitting needles for new knitters. These are what? Say that three times no, real don't. fast. You can wind up saying something terrible. <laughs> yes, you can wind up saying all sorts of stuff. <laughs> exactly. Anyway. It's like a Dr. Seuss book. All right. So these are widely available in any store that carries basic craft supplies. You're going to need a ball of yarn, maybe two if you're going to be doing this with your kid. Um, for new. Maybe three if you have pets, like a cat. That's true. For new knitters, I and a, a good thing to make with an, a novice person is a wash. A novice knitter. <laughs> You're going for the ends, aren't you? <sighs> or at least the hard end sound. I am. Um, a good thing, an easy thing to learn to make when you're first learning to knit is a washcloth, and a fantastic yarn for that is the Lily Sugar and Cream Cotton yarn. And I love it because it comes in a variety of colors. It's cheap. It's like 2 to $4 per ball, depending on where you're at. And if you have a coupon for the store, then it's even cheaper. Sometimes they have giant sales where you can get like four balls for a dollar. It's whatever. It's really cheap. It works really well. And the, the fabric makes for a good washcloth. Very nubby. Gnarly. Yeah. Also, it's We're not... We're getting so many points on the ends. <laughs> it's not slippery on the needles. So slipping stitches won't be as much of a problem, which is... Really, it's kind of a big deal if you're just learning to knit. Dropping those stitches, it's bad. All right, so then you're going to need a basic pattern. Like I said, a simple washcloth is a fantastic first pattern because you can practice your basic knit stitch, your basic purl stitch, your yarn overs, and your slip stitches on them. Nothing fancy. Don't do the fancy stitches right off the bat. If you already know how to knit, you can sit down with your child and your all of your materials and you can show them what to do. If you're doing this, you want to break the steps down into tiny parts and get your child to master each one of the steps before moving on to the next step because they all sort of build on each other. So with knitting, first you're going to learn how to cast on your stitches. Once they have that totally mastered, then you can move on to doing learning the knit stitch. Then you'll move into purl stitching, etc. All right. And these are great for one for fine motor skills. They really are. And coordination and it's well, it's supposedly calming, although my dad hates it when my mom knits because she, like, he's like, you got the knitting face on. And the same with crocheting because she's very serious because she's counting. And she always, like, has her brow down. He's like, you look angry. So it really is relaxing, though. It is relaxing. I remember when, uh, actually, we were in college and we came up and your brother was in high school and he <gasps> and all his buddies, like, oh all these God. guys, some from the football team and the wrestling team and the baseball team and everything. They're all sitting there. The whole living room is full of a bunch of dudes. 
Just high school dudes knitting. They were knitting, and they were seriously knitting, too. They were all making scarves. And I remember I walked in, and I looked at these boys, and they all looked up, and they said, Hi, Jess. And I was like, you're knitting. And I just sort of looked at them, and I turned around, and I looked at my mother, and she just sort of shrugged her shoulders and said they've been doing it for months. Look, if they're knitting, they're not out getting (laughs) drunk and getting in trouble. They're just there with their hands wrapped in some yarn. It was very funny. All right. So once you've mastered all of your stitches, then you can move on to your very first pattern. And like I said, the cheap yarn is great for practicing on because you're going to make mistakes and you'll be ripping all of those mistakes out and redoing it. And when you're doing that with yarn over and over again, it starts to fray and look kind of crappy. So cheap yarn is your friend. If you are not a confident knitter, you could look on YouTube for tutorials. There's all kinds of them made by knitters of various levels. I, My mother-in-law actually taught me how to knit, so I don't have a YouTuber to recommend, but I'm sure that you can get on there and find one that works for you. So if you, t- if you don't love YouTube, um, I know that we're in COVID right now, but things are starting to open back up. You could always check in with your local yarn store or your local craft store and see if they have in-person lessons where a very skilled knitter can teach you and your child how to do all of the things actually in person, which can be very helpful. Like somebody's grandma or a former linebacker. Yeah, exactly. All right. No matter what new skill you decide to teach your child, maybe at the end of this summer, you host some sort of show where they can sort of display their work. So if you take the example of photography, maybe you've been working on various skills each week with your child and you want to have like a little gallery opening for your family and close friends. They're close friends. Ooh, cheese platters, right? it's super grape fun. juice. So you'll work with wine your child. For the adults. You'll work with your child to sort of help pick the best of the best photos for their show, and then you can help them order through a photo printing website. Um, can you walk up to the different exhibits and go, "This one speaks yeah, to me"? Yeah. So yeah, you can totally do that. They'll get their prints in, have them printed at like eight by tens or bigger, and then show them how to map them on construction p- paper to frame them. And then you can hang them throughout your house. And then to make it really fun, you can make it like an actual art gallery opening. So you can have tiny plates with cheeses and finger foods on them, and then you can serve little cups full of grape juice or other things that you bottles of water. Things that are not going to stain if you somebody drops them in your house. And then sort of encourage everybody to walk around and look at all of the really cool things that you made. You could also make little ribbons, blue ribbons, yeah. out of construction paper with a little sticky back on it and give them to everybody or li- different color ribbons and allow them to award their favorites and put it up. Sure. Have the best landscaping, best portrait, whatever. Yeah. Or and some I mean, like, you know, jelly beans in a jar to vote, something. Like I said, you can do this for any of the skills that your kids pick to learn. So have fun with it. If your kids pick cooking, you could spend each week learning a new skill or a new type of recipe or something. And at the end of the summer, you could have like a Top Chef or a Chop Junior competition in your home. And you could do it with parents versus kids or kids versus kids or teens like mom and daughters versus dads and sons or vice versa, whatever it is you want. Important survival skill, too, especially the chopped version, if you've seen the show on Cooking Network, or no, Food, Food Network, Network. Uh, where they open up the box and it's a whole bunch of random ingredients you have to make a dish. It's It prepares you for college. Yes. prepares you for being a young adult where you open the fridge and go, it prepares you for being an actual full adult. Like, we open the fridge and like, well, how am I turning this into dinner? <laughs> so with if you're going to be doing this at home, you'll want to sit down and have a discussion beforehand about what ingredients you'll have available in your house and how long you plan to have for each course. Also, I think it would be great if everybody made a rule and agreed to it to take at least one bite of each other's dishes. This is assuming it's safe to do so. Obviously, you don't want to eat undercooked chicken because nobody wants to get violently ill from doing a fun family Or eat something that you're allergic to. Right, don't do that either. Um, Another thing for cooking, maybe you want to have a cupcake decorating contest. Who can make the most colorful? Who can make the most outrageous, the most flavorful cupcake? The tallest. Yeah. Another fun thing for cooking might be to learn a new culinary skill a week. So you could work on your knife skills with your chopping and your dicing and your slicing and your chiffonades and your juliennes. Or you can work on your sauteing skills. Or you could learn to make all of the mother sauces. 
If you already know all of the mother sauces, you can master their daughters. That sounds bad. <laughs> that sounds oh my bad. God. <laughs> You didn't, like, say this out loud when you were prepping your stuff for tonight, were you? No, I just typed <laughs> it. <laughs> that is so not PC, but, I mean, we all know what you mean, but Jessica. Mm. <laughs> Did somebody take that out of context. Okay? That's so bad coming out of context. <laughs> okay, moving on from crafty things. Have a sip of wine, okay. darling. Have a sip of wine. <laughs> Pass that bottle over here. I already finished my beer. You do get the rum uh, the rum flavor in there with that white wine. You definitely do. Anyway. So for my next idea, I have go for an adventure at home. This is sort of like a staycation. So the materials that you'll need are a map and the internet for planning purposes. And Now, is this a map you're generating when you go out to like the gas station and buy, or is it something you just printed off online? Whatever kind of map will give you a map of the state that you live in. Okay, so like a real map, not like a treasure map you just drew. No. X <laughs> no, no. Spot. I mean, you could do that. That would be a fun thing to do. But no, this is like an actual map. So we live in Michigan. I would want a Michigan map. Okay. It's got all of the cities. So you could just go to the gas station and get one of those foldable Definitely. Maps. The kids okay. will love it. You can teach them how to fold a map. Big life skill. You'll need a mode of transportation. So depending on how far away you go, you mm. could take a car, a bike, a bus, a train. Whatever you need that will get you to where you're going for your day trip. Probably not an airplane. Maybe you want to bring a picnic lunch, refillable water bottles, towels, and appropriate clothing for whatever outings you decide to do. So, backpack. Yeah. So you're going to pick a city or town that you've never been to, and you're going to plan a half a day or a whole day trip to that place. So some things that you might want to do in those places. This is where the internet comes in handy to help you with your research. Look up parks that you've never been to. So think gardens or children's gardens or some sort of like nature, tra nature trails. Nature trails would work. State National parks. Land parks. State parks. Yes. All of those are great things. Actually, even county parks. Yeah, definitely. Municipal parks. Uh, look up lakes and streams and rivers and dams and waterfalls that you've never been to before and see if you can go visit those in person and maybe even splash around a little bit in, in them. See if the town has a really neat downtown area. Is there a used bookstore, comic book store, toy store, vintage clothing store? Statues, landmarks, fountains. Yeah. Antique shops are always fun. Historical markers. Kids are fascinated by antique shops with all the weird stuff in there, especially the oh, kitchen me, Those actually make me paranoid because everything's fragile and the kids want to touch everything. <laughs> um, this would be a great thing to do if you if your state has some of those really cheesy tourist attractions. Every state has cheesy tourist attractions. I know, attractions. and they're amazing. And you've probably never been to the ones in your own state. So Michigan and the UP, we have the mystery spot. Oh, God. Ooh. That, that, that always... We got lots more than besides that, sweetie. Up yeah, there. but that's the one that I could think of. And I know that there's a whole bunch of them up there, but that's the one that first jumped into my mind. Um, And I've never been there, and it's on my list of things to do before I die. <laughs> Go to the mystery spot and find out why it's so mysterious. Or we could put it off and you'll live forever. No. So find out what kind of spots like that are in your area that you can take your kids and go and visit. And I promise you, they will love it. The cheese factor is high and kids love cheesy things. Then they should go to Wisconsin. I know that we're in... You're just going to ignore that yes, one? Yes, I am. Oh, you suck. I know that we're in COVID times right now. But like I said, things are opening back up and things are starting to get back to normal. So check out locally owned restaurants in the area that you're going to. Especially if you didn't pack a picnic lunch and see if... What they're serving. See, so ask them what the, like, everybody's favorite dish for that local restaurant is. And then go and try it. And then talk to each other about what you liked about it. Or maybe what you didn't like and what you would do differently if you were going to, if you were going to recreate it at home. This is also great for language development, having to use those adjectives. Mm -hmm. Not to mention broadening their palate, broadening their experiences, yeah. getting them to try new things. Get them to eat something other than chicken nuggets. And french fries. And mac and cheese. Yes. Try the weird thing on the menu. It's probably delicious. Honestly, if it wasn't delicious, they wouldn't be putting it on the menu because somebody's got to be ordering it. Yep. Is there a local children's museum or theater in the area? Are they open and holding show times or are they, op are they open for playtimes? Maybe stop in there and try it out. 
And if, is there a farmer's market in the area? If there is, highly recommend going because they have wonderful food and the people tend to be very lovely and you can take treats home with you when it's time to go home. Some even offer samples, not all. And don't just assume they are offering, no. you know, be sure to ask, but a lot do offer samples. Yeah, you might find something. Remind your kids that they are samples and not meals. Right, often there's like plates of cookies out. They cannot just have cookies. They are not for free. You have to buy them. It's even like when you go to like the grocery store and they have the little cheese squares and the different dips and everything, all the samples. Now they haven't since in the age of Corona, but uh, our kids, we got through, it's like, look. It's not a buffet line. It's a sample. Have mm-hmm. one. If it's amazing, have a second one and call it good. After that, we will go buy it if you love it that much. Yeah. One of our favorite things to do is to go to farmer's markets, and sometimes they will have food trucks at the farmer's market. Yes. And you can try all of those foods, and they are usually quite delicious. That's what introduced our kids to, not just to crepes. Yes, that's exactly savory what Savory cake of. crepes. So good. So yeah, all of those, that's just some general ideas for of things to look at, look for, things to do in an area that you're unfamiliar with. Maybe in an area you are familiar right. with, but you're not taking full advantage of all the resources in your local community, just near your home. Yeah. So those are great. If it's a beautiful day, you can go out and walk. And, you know, if you've got trolleys or streetcars or horse-drawn carriages or Aww. community bicycles or something to get outside and enjoy and explore but it's not beautiful all the time it rains <laughs> can you have some stuff that you can do near home in the home rainy days or even if it's sunny just still staying at home especially if mom and dad right now a lot of parents are working from home if they got to be on the computer and you want the kids nearby what do you got? Reading. Oh read God, that was loud. The... <laughs> do you want me to redo it? Nope. Okay. You just keep going. <laughs> read all the books. It's good practice and it's so good for your soul. Um. So instead of just saying. Wow, that was deep. It was, right? Yeah. So instead of just like handing your kids a pile of books and say, work your way through these kids all summer long. There you go. Maybe you want to introduce a competition or two into your home. You could do like a Tower of Books competition. So you keep a list of what books you're reading and then maybe designate a, a wall, an empty wall space in your home or a door at the back of a door or something. And each time you finish a book, you can put it on a piece of construction paper, like the title of the book on the piece of construction paper, and then tape it to the wall and make an actual tower and see how tall your book tower can get by the end of the summer. Now, are the pieces of construction paper equivalent to the thickness of the book, or is it just they're all the equal thickness and, you know, it's the number of books? I would probably make it all equal just so that it's a fair measurement. Okay. Yeah. You could also maybe form your own book club, either with your own family unit or with your friends. You could even have a virtual book club meeting if COVID is still a concern for you. Um, I mean, I think COVID's a concern for all of us. Well, for I know, a while. but like in the middle of July, it might not be. Things could be wide open, and people could say, "We are done hiding. Here we come, world." That's how healthcare works. <laughs> I'm not saying that that's what we're going to do. I'm just <laughs> okay. saying some people might be sick of this, and they don't want to. Oh, do it some anymore. people have been sick of it since January. Right. Anyways. Anyway. Virtual book clubs are a great idea if you can't do an in-person one. So maybe if you decide that you're going to have a book club within your own family, you can pick a book that can be read by all members of the family. So I would base this book on whatever reading level your youngest child is at. And then you can either take turns reading it or if possible, you could get copies, either physical copies or digital copies from the local library. So some of you can read it at the same time. And if your youngest child can't read, you can go with the lowest reader. Yeah. And then read it out loud, and the youngest child can just give their thoughts. And... Or just listen. Because listen, you know, listen at that age, listening in counts as reading. Right. And, you know, they're going to make literature. mental it's... pictures inside of their right. heads. So Ask them great questions. Great for development. So once you've all finished reading the book, you can think of your own questions to ask about the story, or you can look online for prompts to talk about. I'm sure that there are prompts for literally every single book that's ever been published at this point on the internet. And for the older kids, and we're talking like upper elementary and up, 
they can have book clubs with their friends yeah. through uh, Zoom and the different video conferencing, Google yeah. Meet. What are, oh, Definitely. You could so many out there. chat with the parents beforehand and talk about what kind of questions you're comfortable with the kids answering and then turn them loose with it. Hand them, yeah, hand them a few questions on paper to get them started and... You know, I'm picturing Mike Myers doing the coffee talk Seriously. skit from SNL. Like, <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. So with the book club and the little kids, uh, don't be afraid to dig deep into themes uh, for even the simplest of stories. Remember, even Dr. Seuss books are, regular, are regularly dissected for their religious and political themes and allegories. And I don't think there's ever a time when it's too early to sort of start to reach into that. Well, isn't the Lorax about environmental concerns? And, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's... And they've got the sneeches with stars on their bellies. The stars and... But I mean, you can find religious allegories in um, Moby Dick, and you can see it in the Harry Potter books, and... And if you don't want to go down the religious avenue, how about just green eggs and ham and being open to trying new foods yeah. and trying new experiences? But the point is, is don't dumb this down for your kids. They're smarter than yeah. maybe you give them credit for, and they're definitely able to handle some of this. See what kind of themes that they've picked up on in the books on their own. See what they come up with. Kids are creative. They come up with wonky things. It's fun. For more things for reading, look into summer reading programs at your local library. I know that a lot of libraries are still closed right now. Ours is. But... Uh, by the way, I meant to tell you. So Kid One and I have been, one of our favorite running spots is actually to park at the local library because the parking lot's mostly empty. We can do our warm-up run. There's a park nearby. There's mm-hmm. a running, big running path, paved running path nearby. <clears throat> Although I didn't even, I forgot to tell you, Kid One likes running in the grass. Yeah. I mean, could you, she be more ready for cross country? That's wild. So I run on the path. She's been running in the grass next to the path, but because we're parking at the library and that's where we're coming back to the car, we're going, making a few laps past it. That's where we do our warm ups. is in the parking lot or on the edge of it. Uh, they've had people, volunteers going in with cleaning supplies. <gasps> the library is going to open? They've had contractors there walking in with Ooh. plexiglass or, you know, Luxan mm-hmm. basically dividers. They're doing some pre-opening work there the library is going to come back i know i love the library so much so yeah Um, there i mean it was this last time we went it was hopping and that's great everybody who went in would they get out of their cars they put their gloves on they mask up Mm -hmm. and then they reach back in the car and out came a bucket and they went in with like just two handfuls of cleaning supplies inside i'm so excited yeah okay so Our library is in the process of opening. Maybe your library already is. But if it's not, a lot of them have online activities available. So I know with ours, you could get a temporary library card. So did you know that every year we have to renew our library cards and get new ones? Yeah, we do. It's a thing. Um, And before COVID hit, I hadn't had time to renew all of ours, so we didn't have them. But they have temporary library cards. That would explain why I don't know, because you take care of it. Yeah. And... You can get access to digital checkouts and participate in the library programs that way. Also, the libraries aren't going to be closed forever, obviously. And so if you get started with the summer reading program now, you'll have a leg up for when the library actually opens and everybody runs out to join in all the fun. I found out that Book It is still a thing at Pizza Hut. Look into it. There's a digital version. Book It. Yeah. You remember Book It. Oh, I remember Book It. Book It is great. So if you don't know what Book It is, it was this thing that at least, especially if you were a child of the 80s and 90s, uh, in elementary school, you read so much. And I think the teachers actually got to set the threshold. But you finished your uh, total for the month. You had a big old button. You got a sticker on it. You got a gift certificate for a free personal pan pizza. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was great. And of course, growing up, like my the Taekwondo school that uh, my family ran was across the street from Pizza Hut. So it was great. Super we would convenient. do, yeah, I know, we do <laughs> Taekwondo class. And then, like, dad would stay there, keep on teaching, and mom would take us, and we just go across the street and get a personal pan pizza. Awesome. I was a super book nerd, so I had book it certificates coming oh, out yeah. of my ears. And every so often, like, I'll go dig through an old box that my parents have sent over and in our book it buttons. Because every year we got a new button. It's so cute. And some of them had the hologram look to it and everything. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I know. Nice. But then, like, the old stickers, most of my old stickers are still on my buttons. And they're, like, the giant 1980s buttons that are, like, um, they're huge on me now. Mm-hmm. So as a kid, I must have taken out my, my whole chest. Ridiculously large. Anyway, 
Book It Was Great. Book It Was Great. And it still exists, apparently. Exactly. So if you get online and do a search for Pizza Hut plus Book It, this will come up and you can read all about it. And maybe it's something that you want to participate in. You could, this summer for reading, you could challenge your kids to read a different type of genre a month than what they're used to. So, for example, kid number one really loves sci-fi slash magical stories. She really loves that fantasy genre. And I would really like her to expand into reading some age-appropriate classics, maybe a little poetry, maybe some historical fiction over summer break. So you could sort of sit down with your kid and see what they'd be open to and come up with books that will fit those new genres, new to them genres. Well, and her uh, her middle school English teacher, to give them a leg up, already sent out a reading list of things they're going to have to read in school and said, hey, you might want to read these. She immediately, our kid, immediately <clears throat> gravitated to the more fantasy t- titles in there, even the ones she had, she knew something about. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, really not making a stretch here to get out of your comfort zone, kid. Yeah. So we're going to try to expand, you know, leave that comfort zone a little bit. Try something new, especially from the comfort of home. Exactly. Because come fall, you're going to have to. Yep. Along with all the other stuff they're going to dump yeah, on so you. you might as well get used to it now. But that doesn't mean give up on it entirely. It's just mix it in a little bit. And it's not just go out to the most extreme away from your comfort zone. It's like, do what you're doing. Just change it a little bit. Let's, let's reach out a little bit further. And then yeah. maybe a little bit further after that. Yeah, and they might discover that they really love something new and want to go down a different path. And that's always exciting. Yeah. So if your family likes competitions that aren't too serious, like ours does... <laughs> You could have a little, a mini family battle of the books. So I thought this would be a really fun idea, especially if you have a whole lot of picture books that are well-loved in your home. You could pick five to ten of your kids' favorite picture books, and everybody in the family has to read them over the course of a week or two. However long your kids need to properly read the book and sort of retain the details about them. And then... Maybe you and your partner sit down and you create questions about the books. And then you have your battle of the books. And and then you set aside the inappropriate questions you had fun with because you were drinking while doing this. (laughs) Exactly. But maybe you make categories of questions like, we're going to talk about the foods that all the characters eat. And you have to tell me the name of the book based on the foods. Or maybe we're going to have questions about character names and settings and themes and actions they did. Um, And what is your favorite uh, picture book? Oh, it is Cooking with Henry and Ellie Belly. This book is magical. It's about a preschooler who cooks with her older brother. And they have a pretend cooking TV show. And it is beyond hysterical. The three-year-old gets into some situations with her doll. And her, her dolls all go for a bath in the washing bath, machine. Yeah. And her big brother has to deal with... Having a three-year-old who keeps trying to take over his cooking show when all he wants to do is make pancakes, but she wants to have pirate pancakes, and her doll constantly has to help, and then there are commercials inside of the book. It's great. If you can find a copy of this one, highly recommend it. And this one would totally be in our battle of the books for the kids because they all love it. Yes. And you love it. I do. Mm -hmm. Not as much as I like a different book. Uh, the Sea of Bath, which is currently out of print. You cannot find that book anywhere. Well. It's magnificent. Look around. You know, you can't find it on Amazon, but it, you might find a copy floating around in a, a secondhand book store. Used bookstore. Maybe secondhand in the library. Store. In the library would be a good place. It's the story of bath time from the perspective of the captain of one of the toy boats. So cute. And he's got to contend with scuba divers and all the other bath toys going around. But it's the little captain in the little boat in the bathtub and the big waves and everything. And especially my favorite was reading to the kids with a pirate voice. Yar. Yeah. Yeah. I was sad when they destroyed that book. They've destroyed a lot of books. That's why we've had multiple copies. Great. (laughs) Anyway, back to your thing. All right. So that's it for books. That's all I've got. I think you can turn your kids into readers with at least one of those ideas, right? Right. Right. Okay, moving on. Our family, our kids, no, our our entire family, we really enjoy water parks and splash pads. We love going to them. They're always a good time. 
but it's not always possible due to closures and overcrowding and now we have COVID. So what are you to do? You can make a splash pad at home. All you need is a faucet and a bunch of hoses and maybe a hose splitter or two. And then a couple of other things. You can get uh, spray misters that you can hook up to your hoses and they just sort of spray you with mist as you run through them or sit in front of them. They're relatively inexpensive and you can find them at your local hardware store, usually in the summertime, or you, I'm sure you can special order them online. But they're, I think they were less than $10 when we got them. Does that feel like right? Four bucks. Yeah. So super cheap and they hold up and they're, they're not heavy, which is good because if your kids are running through them and they accidentally knock them over, they're not going to get a boo-boo. I mean, it really was, it looked like a, a wound piece of pl- a plastic tubing. Mm-hmm. They went up like an S, and at the top, there's two little metal screws to go in to change how much mist versus just spray of water you want. They yeah. tighten down or loosen. And the hose hooks on the end, and that's it. Super easy. And they feel great, especially we had them when we lived out in Virginia. It'd be hot and muggy. Mm-hmm. Go to a super fine mist so you're not getting completely soaked. Yep. So you can get the misters. You can also hook just like a movable sprinkler up to your hose and turn it on and have the kids run through it. Kids love this. It looks kind of junky, but it's hey, fun. It works for us kids, as kids. I know. It can work for them. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's retro, like, vintage fun. Yeah, but if you walk down the street and you see people running through the, anyways, it's fun. I don't care if I'm out running and someone's got their sprinkler on. I go run through the sprinkler now, like not up in the yard, but if it's. In the, yeah, I do Especially the when I do like in the street. do races and it's through somebody town and somebody's got their sprinkler overhanging into the street. I can watch all the whole crowd kind of avoid it. I'm like, no, nope, I'm going through that. All right. So you can hook up a movable sprinkler or if you've got in-ground sprinklers, turn them on and set the kids loose in the yard. Because you can water your yard and you can water your kids at the same time and everybody gets nice and cool and refreshed that way. Uh, you could get... A kiddie pool, like the plastic kind that you can get at the toy stores. Or the inflatable ones. Inflatable ones are nice because you can keep those up for a little bit longer. Um, These are great to just sort of sit in and kick around in and splash in. If you have a repositional slide, like the tiny and little types type plastic slides, you can set that up so that it slides right down into the kiddie pool and set the hose on it. It makes it like a slip and slide, like a, like a water slide. Our kids really loved it when we did that in Virginia. They would probably still love it if we set it up now. Well, and some of the smaller ones, actually, they do inflatable splash type pad type things. They have a little mini slide, which is great when they're under the age of three. Yeah. They got to be little, but it usually has like one or two steps, all inflatable. So it's great if you have an air pump. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting there red in the face, just huffing and puffing to blow this thing up. And then it has splash pad and it's only a few inches deep. Mm-hmm. But, you know, keep in mind, you, you do need to supervise your yes, kids you when do. you're doing any of this water stuff because drownings can happen in an inch yes. of water, and it's a serious thing. So make sure you watch your kids. Um, Get in with them. It's <laughs> it's fun. Like, seriously, sit in the slash pad with them. It's great. Yeah. Another thing that you could use to Make one of your cocktails your... from our cocktail recipe uh, episode <laughs> and sit while the kids splash around. more fun that way. There you go. Another fun thing that you could do in your splash pad splash park set up in your yard is if you have already have some sort of tub toy fill it up with water and put plastic boats in it or bath time squirters in it and set your kids loose with that for people who aren't familiar with the the tub toys and i mean you're talking about bathtub toys the squirters i'm thinking about tub table tub tables are tables where you can put different types of uh, materials and to touch to touch it's a touch and feel tub yeah i mean so, we had one that also had like a little canal you could put little boats in it mm-hmm. and had little buttons you could push and actually it was like a pump you basically hit it and it would they have little geysers oh yeah and it was what was it little tykes or those all the companies make yeah. all the plastic stuff um they're great you could also if you have just one of those big tubs and these are pretty popular in preschool classrooms just a big empty tub and then you can fill it up with a variety of materials, like you could do it with water beads or sand or beans or whatever. Yeah, and you talked about water beads the last time we talked about activities. Yeah, so but you could move it outside, fill it up with water, and then put plastic boats and then bath time squirters with the little, you know, the little plastic. Yeah, the little animals and stuff. And then you can yeah. squirt your siblings with them, or squirt your parents with them. 
or even teeny tiny squirt guns. Although little hands sometimes have trouble pulling the trigger on the squirt guns, whereas the little squirt animals where you just squeeze them, fill them up with water, and then go squeeze. Mm -hmm. Easier because they don't have that grip strength yet. Speaking of water guns, epic water gun and spray bottle fights in the yard are yes. incredibly fun. The kids always love doing this. It's highly requested in our house every summer. Um, what Another thing that you could use for this are those big water tubes. I think the water tubes where you suck up the water and then you can squirt a stream of water at people as they run by. You know what I'm talking about. I very much know what you're talking about. In fact, what was it? Last summer, the kids went and got uh, some supersized ones. Now, this isn't like a super soaker where you go and you pressurize the air tank. Mm -hmm. It's more like a simple pump. You put it in the water, you pull back, and it's a giant tube, yes. but it has like a handle on the end. And then you just push the plunger in and it sprays. Well, they got these ones that are about four feet long. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ones we were playing with before were a foot, foot and a half. You know, not much. Well, they got the ones that are four feet long. Well, first off, uh, kid three couldn't pull it back all the way. <laughs> His arms weren't long enough. But and then pushing it forward, I mean, it had a huge volume of water, and they had some distance on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They come in all sizes, though. You can get teeny tiny ones for younger kids, and then you have the giant ones for the older kids or the adults. Well, then you have my dad show up, and he, like, saw the kids were playing with the, the smaller ones. He's like, uh, I could use these for when I need to suck out water. I'm doing projects on, you know, rental properties and home improvement stuff. Yeah, we took our water to, <laughs> to go to work. Not the four-footers. The, the little ones the are like a... Ones. Yeah, the tiny ones are like a foot. At the online party supply stores. So, multi-purpose. Definitely. To add into all of your epic water gun and spray bottle fights, you can always do water balloons. Just make sure, make sure to pick up the pieces when you're done so that birds don't eat them. And if you have a pool, I have lots of pool game ideas. Yes. Yeah, we actually played a bunch of these tonight while we were out there. Our kids absolutely love the diving toys. They love to swim down to the bottom of the pool and collect literally anything they find off of the bottom and bring it back up and show us and say, Mommy, I found this! Look at it! It's amazing! So you can buy official ones that companies make from the stores. I actually just bought a pirate-themed dive toy set online, and I am super excited about it. The kids don't know that it's coming, but I am positive that, it, that they will love it. It has bones! <laughs> and it has gemstones! And it has seahorses! <laughs> and it has coins! And it has sharks! And there's a treasure chest that you can keep all of this stuff in. Who needs this boring old dive sticks and dive rings when you can have bones and gems? Right. See, how could you not want it? It's going to be amazing. Actually, I do want it. It sounds pretty awesome. Um, so I can't wait for that to get here. I did also order the standard diving rings because our kids love them and they fight over them. Like cats and dogs, it's weird. Um, so more of those are coming. Well, and their swimming abilities and their lung capacities are increased. So, like, yeah. we need more of them. Yes, because they can collect multiple of them now. Now, the other nice part is if it was just swimming laps for the Red Arrow Challenge and the Summer Racing Club, that's boring as a kid. But you and I sit on the edge of the pool and just throw a bunch of rings in and we throw them to the far end of the pool and they just have to swim down there and bring them back to us. Guess what? They just did a lap. And they, what they see is... Fun and excitement and a racing. Yeah. And they're not thinking about how many laps they did. And as we sit there with sidewalk chalk on the side of the pool, just making tally marks going, mm -hmm. okay, how much did they do tonight? So if you if you don't want to buy an official diving toy, you can turn anything into a diving toy. At swimming lessons, the teachers actually use pennies and quarters as incentives to get the kids to swim down to the bottom of the pool. And this worked really, really well because those kids wanted that money. They also got to keep it, which was exciting for them. Now, do you have to keep track of this to make sure it doesn't get sucked into you your filter? You should, because you don't want to get coins into your pool filter. I'm sure that would not be good for the system. But, you know, it's easy enough to keep track of the amount of pennies you throw into the pool. You can also make your own. If you have some spare plastic Easter eggs, you can put things in them to weigh them down. So think rocks or spare change or something, anything that's heavy that's going to not get moldy if these things stay wet for an extended period of time. Once you put the things inside and then of the super egg, glue, hot yeah, glue to seal would, it. you want to hot glue them shut, make sure they're well sealed, and then you can throw them into the pool. We like to have contests to see who can collect the most 
uh, diving toys with a single breath. I think a lot of families like to do that at the pool. So how many eggs can you get in your basket? It's like an Easter egg hunt every day in the summer. Yay! It, do you like to swim in the evening or at night? You can use glow sticks as dive toys, and it makes for a really, really fun time in the pool with all the Actually, colors. you use them during the day. They're just not as fun. Yeah, no. It's a waste of a glow stick. You can have a cannonball battle or a creative jump battle if your pool is deep enough. Who can make the biggest splash? If you have floaties in the pool, see whose splash can rock the most floaties or pop them out of the water. We did that tonight. You can stack up, if you've got some of those blow-up rings, stack them up, see if you can knock over the tower. Yeah. Squirt Ooh. toys in the pool are always a good idea, especially if you've got little kids who aren't so great at swimming and they can't chase their big siblings. You throw a couple of these in the pool and they will happily kick along to swim to them. It's also good if you're trying to teach your kid how to swim. You just sort of toss it in front of you and then you have them reach out for it as they are practicing their early learner kicks. And it's a the reaching motion to get to the toy is a precursor to learning to do the scoops with your arms when you're learning to swim. So for game, like official games for the pool, I have a whole bunch of them. Sharks versus minnows is a very well-known game. Uh, the gist of it is the shark stands in the middle of the pool, and the minnows are standing outside the pool on the edge. When the shark says, go, all the minnows all jump in and try and get past the shark without being tagged. The kids who are tagged are out until the end, and the last one to be tagged turns into the shark for the next round. Or you could play where if you get tagged, you also turn into a shark with the original shark to try and catch all of the other minnows. And then again, once the last one to get tagged, uh, the last kid standing turns into the shark for the next round. That's how the kids usually play it too when they, because uh, they play it at hockey mm -hmm. and work on their skating skills. And that's usually how it is. If you get tagged, now you're a shark and they keep going until there's only one minnow left. Yep. Another classic game is chicken fights. Please make sure that if your kids are playing this, the ones on the bottom are strong enough to actually support the kids on top of them. And also you want to make sure you're in deep enough water where you won't accidentally smash into the bottom of the pool and get hurt when you fall over. And you want to make sure you're in the middle of the pool so that you're not going to accidentally slam into the side of the pool. And still, watch them just in case. <clears throat> Definitely. Uh, so, I mean, everybody knows how to play this game. One person is the base of the chicken, and the other person sits on their shoulders, and the other team does the same thing. Once everyone is situated, the two teams walk towards each other, and then when they meet up, the people on top try and knock the other person off of their perch. I like it when you put like an American Gladiator-style um, flair with it, and use the wacky noodles to whack each other. <gasps> Fantastic. And these are the big... Uh, they're big foam tubes. You can find them everywhere at dollar stores and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, they're usually... Pool hollow. noodles. Pool noodles, yeah. And wacky noodles, pool noodles, and you just whack each other with them and try to knock them off. Mm -hmm. It also gets to be a fun aquatic version of jousting. Jousting, yes. Gladiators. All right, so whoever's left standing is the winner. And then you do it again, and it's great fun. Next up is a game called What Time Is It, Mr. Fox? And this is basically a variation of Red Light, Green Light. Only it's with a fox, so it's more fun. So, one kid is Mr. Fox. The rest of the kids go to the other end of the pool. And the kids that are at the other end of the pool on the wall call out, What time is it, Mr. Fox? And then Mr. Fox picks a time. And depending on what time Mr. Fox gives, the kids have to move forward that many steps. So if Mr. Fox says, It's four o'clock. The kids have to move forward four steps. And this keeps going and the kids keep getting... Or four kicks if they can't touch the bottom. Sure. Um, this keeps going and the kids keep moving closer and closer to Mr. Fox. At any point, Mr. Fox can decide, It's lunchtime! And he will leap forward and try and eat someone. If he eats you, you turn into Mr. Fox. But if you escape and you make it all the way back to the home base of the wall... You're safe, and the game just continues. So we played this tonight, and it was a big hit. Yeah. Uh, but with kid number four, one, we were playing after dinner, so it's already getting kind of late, and she didn't take a nap today. But also, it's a little bit above. She wasn't quite getting So when it was her turn to be it, and she's got her floaty on, so she's just hovering there, <laughs> I went and swam behind her and gave her prompts on what to say for what time is it. Mm-hmm. Because she like they're like, what time is it? And she's thinking, I can't tell time. 
<laughs> yeah, we tried to prompt her to just say numbers, and she was like, I don't understand. So I would say, say three. And she'd go, three! Yeah, they were so much fun. The kids loved it. All right, so next I have floaty race. The kit, this is really easy. So if you have pool floaties, this is going to work great. If you don't have some, maybe considering going to get a couple of noodles or a pool floaty or two. Probably two if you're going to do this. Go to the they dollar can, store. Yeah, they're cheap there. Yeah. And if they pop, it's really not. Yeah, they're like a dollar. Yeah. The kids sit inside or on top of their favorite floaty or noodle. Line up against the wall. Someone shouts, go. And the kids take off and they race to the end of the pool. Whoever gets there first is obviously the winner. Very easy, very fun. Another way to disguise laps. Exactly, because the kids are going to be kicking or scooping with their hands to get their floaties across the pool. Quick jump quiz. We didn't get to do this one tonight, and I was really hoping that we would, because I think that they would get a huge kick out of it. There's always tomorrow. Yeah. It's supposed so, to be beautiful tomorrow. Fantastic. We'll do it. So one person is the quiz master. And oh, the Lord. Rest, <laughs> and the rest of the kids line up at the deep end of the pool. One by one, the kids will take a few steps and then jump into the pool. While they are moving, but before they jump in the air to jump into the pool, the quiz master will ask a simple question, like, what is your sister's name? What color is your hair? What year is it? The jumper needs to answer the question while in the air, but before they hit the water. I like it. To, if you want to increase the hilarity, progressively make the questions harder and harder and more absurd. And wait for them to, like, be answering it while they go into the water to get a mouthful of water. Mm, you know, whatever. It's something fun, something silly, something different. It is. Keeps them entertained. Well, and it combines that thinking while doing physical activity. It's, it's really hard to think when you're doing physical activity. Oh, I know, because, like, I make my runners do a trip we do for our breast cancer awareness run every year. And you know, because you bring the Girl Scouts to help ask the questions. But while they're out running a half-mile circuit over and over again, and they get one point per lap, when they complete the circuit, they're asked a trivia question. And they're really simple trivia questions. <laughs> Except for when you've been running. And some of these kids are doing seven, eight miles. Yeah. And suddenly they're getting questions like, true or false? George Washington is on the penny. Kindergartners know that one. <laughs> but not when you've been running seven miles and you're still running as the question's being asked yeah. of you. So, yeah, when you got to think literally on your feet, or in this case, as you fly through the air, it's a little bit tougher. Mm -hmm. So that's the quiz master game. Quick jump quiz. Next up is Find the Lost Bottle of Atlantis. This is a very simple game. It will keep them entertained for a while. You need a clear plastic water bottle, and it needs to be filled with water, and the label needs to be removed. You'll need some goggles, and what you're going to do is you're going to fill up this bottle with water, and then you're going to throw it in the pool and tell your kids they need to find the lost bottle of Atlantis. This is tricky because it blends in with the water in the pool really, really well. It basically disappears. So they're going to and have if it has to a use... blue cap and you've got a bluish liner, it, you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> um, your kids are going to have to use their uh, sense of touch to really figure this one out. They're not going to be able to rely on their sight to find it. So the next game that I have is, it's called Air Ninja. I'm not really sure why it's called that, but I guess you're kind of being a ninja. Anyways, your kids want to jump into the pool. You want to work on imaginative play skills, and you want to work on their ability to categorize items and things. Mesh the two together, and you've got Air Ninja. The kids line up at the deep end. You call out a category. They, they line up on the edge of the pool, out of the water, in the deep end. The person that's it is in the pool, far enough away. You call out a category, and you give them a few moments to think of an object or a character or a person or whatever, that will fit into that category. And then you shout go, and they have to jump up and strike a pose as if they are that item or person that fits in that category while they're in the air and hold it as they fall into the pool. So for example, if you say cartoon character, maybe you'll get answers like Mickey Mouse or the Paw Patrol dogs or Simpsons family member or whatever it is your kids are into. This game is hilarious. We did it tonight, and the kids absolutely loved it. They did not want to stop to get out of the pool. They wanted to keep going. They didn't care that we were being attacked by a million mosquitoes. They wanted to or keep... Or that the sun was setting, or that it was rapidly 
And the temperature was dropping. Yeah. And yeah. Didn't care about any of it. They just wanted to keep doing it. We had to promise that we would play it again tomorrow. So some categories that we used were your favorite Harry Potter character or... Zoo animal. Zoo animals. Aquatic um, animals. I actually said types of fruit, which was really funny. <laughs> Well, the kid that was wearing the orange shirt and jumped in with his like arms kind of like out like a ball. I'm like, oh, he's an orange. And he's like, and he goes, no. I'm a grape. <laughs> okay. We did the Avengers. Mm-hmm. That was great. The first kid to jump in the pool was the Hulk. Yeah, that was actually a really good We had good Hulk. One. We had uh, Black Panther. And we had Iron Man. I don't know. I don't know. There were so many of these. Uh, we did jungle animals. Harry Potter was great because the first kid that jumped in had his little arms out like a little bat, but he was, you know, he's doing Hedwig the Owl. Yeah. So it's it's a really funny game. It's probably one you've not heard of yet, so it's got that nice novel effect to it. Oh, we did states, too. Oh, yes. They had to pretend to be a state. Yes. That was good. Okay, and the last game that I have for the pool is along the same vein. It's called Categories. This game is best with a lot of people think more than two but if you've only got two that's okay you can still do it so one person is it and they hop out of the water and they stand at the this is done at the deep end and they stand on the edge of the pool the other people hang on to the wall in the deep end now the person that's it is facing away from the water they are not looking at the people in the water and the person that is it they call out a category And the other people that are in the water take a moment to think about an item or a person that fits that category. They don't say it out loud. They just remember it. So then after the moment... And they got to be honest. Yes. Or this all falls apart. Right. So then after a moment, the it person starts calling out answers that fit the category. If an answer is called that someone has chosen, they take off and start swimming down to the shallow end. The it person hears the people swimming, turns around, jumps into the water, and they have to try and catch the person before they can get to the shallow end of the pool. If they manage to catch you, then they become the new it person, and a new category is chosen. If they don't catch you, you've got to hop back out and go back and restart a new round. Now, you do need to watch this one, because we ran into a little issue here, where uh, when we tried it out, that one of the kids, the, the it kid, went and chased down the other kid that took off swimming, grabbed onto the foot, and they were in the shallow end. No, they were in the deep end. No, they were still partly in the shallow end because that kid, I won't say which gender and which age, but it was out of the older ones, stood up, oh. and the kid that was the being chased is now there kind of upside down underwater, to which I had to intervene right away going, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. And so it's probably best for older kids who are not going to accidentally try and drown their siblings. But even but, if they're super competitive, keep an eye on them. Yeah. It, it is a really fun game, though. Like, I think if you had a group of adults, just adults, no kids around, this could be amazing. Especially if you have a pretty long pool. Yeah. This will be fun. All right. So that's... It, it was fun. Yeah. It, it's good. Just keep an eye on them. But otherwise, it was fun. They enjoyed it. Yeah. They really like the categories games. Like, I think that they think that that's very funny. Yes. And they like to see how creative they can be with the answers that they come and up with. And if you know the fit. width of your pool, another way of disguising swimming distances, if they're jumping in, like when we were jumping in, you had to pretend to be something. Mm-hmm. We know from their jumping point to the ladder how far it is. Yeah. So that we can just start making tally marks. Because we always take sidewalk shock out to the pool. Kid number four, especially, there's only so much she can do out there. And she'll get bored after a while, or she'll just get tired, but she doesn't want to leave because everyone's having fun. So she'll sit there and do art. So we've got sidewalk chalk for her. We've got sidewalk chalk for us for while we're swimming laps. Mm-hmm. And we can keep track of what the other kids are up to. Or they do it, too. Yep. We like to keep a piece by the ladder, so as they're climbing out, they do another tally mark. Mm-hmm. And then we just calculate it at the end. How much swimming did you do today? Mm-hmm. All right, so that's all I've got for pool games and activities. Moving on, we've got movie night. We love movie night. We, we love movies. I know, we really do. Uh, we we really like to do movie night with popcorn or ice cream or sometimes s'mores. Uh, whatever your family likes is going to work perfectly for your movie night. 
So sometimes when we do it, we rent newer movies, and sometimes we prefer older movies. Recently, our we've introduced the like the old Bogart movies to our kids, and kid number two in particular has taken a serious shine to those. He thinks that they are fantastic. So he'd be happy to watch those all oh, the time. He loves Casablanca. He so loves cute. the Maltese Falcon. No, he got so into it. It's great. Um, I'm kind of waiting to see if that ends up being his Halloween costume. He gets like a little fedora and that would trench be coat. Amazing. He goes to Sam Spade yes. or Rick. Like a little so dinner jacket. Yep. So I was thinking to sort of switch up the way we do movie night this summer, we might pick a theme for the movies that we watch. And I was thinking for us, it might be really fun to only watch movies from the 80s. <laughs> Different 80s movie for each week or whatever. I mean, you can do whatever decade or genre of movie I mean, you like. 80s movie fun because we've shown them some 80s movies. And, and we get they some, love them. Well, they love them and we get some interesting comments that are just entertaining for us as it is. Yeah. So we showed them Harry and the Henderson and they were not phased one bit by the giant hairy Bigfoot in the movie. But the mom that talked repeatedly on the phone that was attached to a cord that was attached to the wall blew their minds. They could not figure out why that was even a thing, why she needed to be attached to the wall at all times, why it was so long. Um, and so we had to, like, pause the movie. Oh, yeah, and they had questions like, the way phones do people, to be. Do people steal phones in that neighborhood? What's going on? Yeah. So, Never mind, there's a Sasquatch walking through the house. Nope, that's perfectly normal. Yeah, but the phone, totally why is the phone attached <laughs> to the wall? So, you know, pick, like, a type of movie that your kids are going to get a kick out of. Um, I think we're going to do 80s movies just because of comments like that. I that can't or wait we to did, see. We did Goonies. Yeah, they had a whole bunch of questions and comments about Goonies. Oh, yeah, why is Thanos wearing his shorts over his sweatpants? Yep, it is fun to see. Who they recognize from more modern movies that are in these really also old movies goodies. from the 1980s. Hey, why, why is that guy a hobbit and why are his feet so small? Yes. All right, so I made a list of some of the 80s movies that we might show our kids. They've seen some of them, but some of them they haven't. And I've got Labyrinth and Legend and Flight of the Navigator, Harry and the Hendersons, E.T., Short Circuit, Back to the Future, Princess Bride, The NeverEnding Story, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Ghostbusters, the Karate Kid, Gremlins, A Christmas Story. This one was made in the 80s, but it's set in the 50s. Uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Willow, Three Men and a Baby, Muppets Take Manhattan, Big, Goonies, and Batman. There are a long the Tim list. Tim Burton Batman? Tim Burton Batman all the way. Jack Nicholson as the Joker. There's you know, I don't think I've seen Willow since I was a kid. I've never seen Willow. Really? Yep. Wow. It's surprising, isn't it? I thought when we were growing up, like, every girl had uh, Val Kilmer on their wall. I had David Bowie. Well, okay. Labyrinth David Bowie? Labyrinth David Bowie. That's the best Bowie. Or Ziggy Stardust. Nope. Labyrinth. Yay! Anyways, there are many more movies to choose from. You can base your movies on the ages of your children. If you've got older teens, maybe some John Cuban movies. Might be more appropriate for them versus Muppets taking You know what? Uh, I heard that friends of ours did during their whole COVID, 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 uh, COVID quarantine. Another tongue twister. This is not our night. It's not. No. Uh, during their COVID quarantine, they watched all the Marvel movies in order. So many people are doing that, especially with Disney Plus, because mm-hmm. they're all on there. You could do all the Star Wars movies. No, thank you. It won't take you nearly as long as doing all the Marvel movies. The Marvel movies will be more entertaining. No, yeah, that's debatable. But anyway. It's not. It just is. Give it time. Anyways, Disney owns them all. They'll all cross over soon. Um, Pick movies that are age appropriate for your kids and also level appropriate for your kids. Don't pick movies that are going to be grossly over their heads. This is supposed to be fun for them and fun for you. Introducing nostalgia from your childhood and introducing them to it so they can be just as weird as you were when you were growing up. If you're worried about whether or not a movie is going to be suitable for your family, I highly recommend checking out commonsensemedia.org. It will tell you pretty much everything you could ever want to know about a movie. Um, It'll tell you exactly what themes and what topics are in the movie or like 
how many people get killed or what whatever your concern is, it will tell you the answer. Also, I'll make it easy for you. If Sean Bean's in it, there's going to be at least one death. Okay. It's going to be Sean Bean. Also, another website that's really good for this sort of information is called doesthedogdie.com. Oh, my God. And that was made because nobody likes to watch movies where the dog dies. And it can actually be really upsetting for some viewers and somebody. Well, yes. And it'll also tell you everything you could ever want to know about all of the movies. That's what I've got for movie night. <laughs> and my last activity on this list, something that you can do with your family, is to have a simulated camp out. This would be good for rainy days or if you just want to sort of try out camping without actually going anywhere. Or if you just need something midweek. I mean, you, you can't get away because you got to work. Right. But the kids want an adventure. Mm -hmm. Adventure in your backyard or in your living room. So if you've got a tent, you can pitch it in your yard. Or if you don't like outside, like maybe you have eight bazillion mosquitoes. Or you, they're just like you. And if we had no mosquitoes, you still wouldn't want to go sleep in a tent. I don't want to sleep in on the ground. I just don't. They make cots. We don't have one. So I'd be sleeping on the ground. Break out the yoga mat. That's probably not good enough. <laughs> Anyways, if you don't... Look, we don't have a four-star tent. <laughs> I don't know. There's not room Does service. Does it have windows on it? Yeah, it does. It has a vestibule, too. It sleeps ten. Um, if you don't want to be outside on the ground with the bugs, you can make a sheet and a pillow fort slash tent inside. Actually, if, you're, if your living room is big enough, you could actually pitch the tent inside of your living room. And that could be really fun. Um... You could, if, even if you're going to be sleeping inside, you could make a fire pit and then have cook camping type foods over the fire pit outside and then bring them or inside to eat a, or a, sit outside and eat them. If you have a grill, charcoal grill or gas grill, you could simulate the fire pit and the cooking experience over the grill. Yeah. So I think what, tin foil can, no, that's wrong. Tin no, no. can meals, right? Yeah. You know, foil like, meals, those are a thing. Aluminum foil meals. Or, you can look online, but all those usual those things you remember from scouting and camping and everything, you can do those on your stove, in your oven, on your grill. S'mores, you can definitely, if you have a gas top stove, you can make s'mores inside of your house. The other thing is you can get the little sterno cans, mm. and you can make s'mores over those. Yeah. So while you're also doing your simulated campouts, you can play camping games. Like? Kick the can, capture the flag. Yeah, those would be great. You could do camping crafts like make a keychain or something. Ghost stories? Tie dyeing. Oh. You could do tie dyeing. And then after you have like your snack, then you could do ghost stories. So you're going to need a flashlight if you're going to do that. Hold it under so your you chin. Can hold it under your chin to be nice and creepy. So. I think that those are really great things to do while you're doing your simulated camp out. And that's all I've got for you guys. So I got a question for you. You've got a virtual camp out coming up for Girl Scouts with kid number one. I'm super excited about this. We're not sleeping outside. We have a tent. I just explained to you about the dirt and the mosquitoes and I'm not doing well, it. Well, we have a, <laughs> it's not a sheet with some sticks. We have a tent, like There's a full-on no, tent with a vestibule. There's no bed in it. I don't want to, I have a bad back. <laughs> I'm not sleeping on the ground. What if we put a cot in it? We don't have a cot. It's the backyard. Can we just send her out there? She's no. like middle school. She's a mosquito magnet. She'll turn into a giant bump. Yeah, they don't, like, drill their way through the tent. They might. Anyways. So they're not going to fly away with the tent. What's the point Anyways. about this virtual camp out that you brought up? Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> I honestly don't know <laughs> because they haven't sent all of the information yet. I know that there are going to be specific food. Are you taking the cushions off the couch in the living room and making, like, a fort in the living room? We are totally going to make a pillow fort. Um, to sleep in that night. I'm willing to sleep on the carpeted floor with this kid. Maybe I'll blow up one of the air mattresses. You know, you can blow up air mattresses and put them in the tent in the yard. I don't want to sleep outside. There are bugs. <laughs> Do you know what happened the last time I went camping and slept outside? I don't know, because you and I have never gone camping. I used and to suggest it when we were in grad school. We're like, hey, let's drive down to the beach. There's a state park there. 
We can go camping overnight. We can make a weekend of it. And you're like, no, there's no showers no. and bathrooms. The last, right, and this is a serious concern, bathrooms. Um, well, they had bathrooms there, but they're like porta potties. <laughs> and in terms of showers, it's like, we'll go jump in the ocean. No. Um, the last time I went camping was in sixth grade. It was a mandatory camping thing, and there's a local nature Yeah, you know, we're in sixth grade trips. They're lame. Yeah, well, this one, um, we went towards the end of May in full swing of mosquito season. And my mom had bought some sort of, like, natural bug repellent stuff that didn't work. And somebody... Yeah, especially in the all-natural stuff in the 90s was awful. Yeah, it didn't work. It's pointless. And one of my tent mates left the tent unzipped, and like an army of mosquitoes got in, and they attacked us while we were sleeping. All so the we city woke up kids. The next morning, and we were covered head to toe in mosquito bites. I counted mine. I had over three hundred bites. Okay, it was really, really terrible. I didn't go to the bathroom for over twenty four hours. <laughs> This because something about a hole. Oh, what? Because around this time you were doing this, I was getting my wilderness survival yeah. merit badge where we had to build our own shelters and stay out in the woods for a weekend by ourselves. And like we weren't just sleeping on the ground, like we we're building them. I hated every minute of six building our own latrines, camping. water purification systems. This has been a serious issue. Um, the I co lead my daughter's Girl Scout troop and. Um, the other co-leader really wants to go camping and I want to go camping too, but I don't want to sleep outside. You're and like, you want to do Troop Beverly Hills uh, camping. <laughs> Let's go stay at the Ritz Carlton. Just sleep in to go to the bathroom. I, I will do all of the other outside things. I think it's really fun and it's exciting. Like the archery Can stuff. Can we stay in a bed and oh, breakfast and then go hiking? But I don't want to sleep outside. Um, and so she has... We we have a Girl Scout camp, and there are cabins, and so we were supposed to take the girls camping um, this spring, and we were going to stay in the cabins, but COVID happened, and something about mosquitoes and Tripoli. And... Is this the same campground that um, we have some friends who have girls that are a few years older, and they went... No, this is a different and one. And that one was like the horror stories of people <laughs> coming down with like no. norovirus, and the toilets were full of mosquitoes. <laughs> Like, not the bathroom, the actual toilet bowl, there's a picture, and it's almost solid black of just a bugs. swarm of bugs. Um, no, this is a completely different camp. I've been to this camp. It's very lovely. It's very well maintained. There are no toilets full of mosquitoes at this one. Um, I was actually really looking forward to doing this camp out with our troop, but it, it was canceled because of COVID. Obviously. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll do it again next year. We'll d finally do it next year, or maybe if things clear up enough, we could do it this summer. Um, cause the girls all really want to do it too. They're excited about it. Um, so yeah, we've got our virtual camp out coming and she and I are planning to do whatever it is you're going to have on the list outside. It's just, we'll be coming in to sleep inside, but I am perfectly fine staying outside. Like if one of the things is... I still think air mattress in the tent outside. No. If one of the things is a star chart, like, I am perfectly happy sitting outside with her as long as we need to in order to see Mars or whatever kind well, of constellation it is. She has her little telescope she got for Christmas exactly. several years ago. Yeah, like, I'm super excited about that. I'm excited to do the fire pit foods. I'm not sure how we'll actually do that outside since we don't have a fire pit, but I'm sure we'll be able to figure something out. I'll help you. Um, so, yeah, everything except for the sleeping outside part. Are we good? Parts. The oh, sleeping outside. And my headphones sound like fart. No, not fart. No. No. Although, Blazing Saddles. I have never seen scene. that movie either. Are you aware of the classic scene? Cowboy sitting around the campfire eating beans. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know about that. Thing. Add that to movie night. I didn't know that was from that movie. Really? I didn't. Mm -hmm. Oh. But yeah, it should be As on our list. The, yeah, they, no, they're, they're not showing no, that. No, it shouldn't be on our list. <gasps> oh. When was Robin Hood Men in Tights made? Nineties. Oh man, not gonna work. Well, unless we do, you know, August becomes nineties movie. Oh no, nineties movies. We'll have to show them Clueless. As if. <laughs> the nineties movies aren't as fun as the eighties movies. They're just not. Right. Anyway. So that's all I've got for you guys. Those are my 
fun things to do with your kids during summer vacation, at least for now. I have a bazillion more ideas, but this is We did, we did. Yes, this is long enough. We actually did edit this down for this episode. (laughs) We will have more episodes intermixed with the diet and nutrition and fitness and everything else uh, we've got coming up. But for now, this is it for this episode. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Red Arrow Health and Wellness Podcast. It's been fun, Jessica. So much fun, Marco. (laughs) This one actually flew by. Uh, Hopefully it flew by for the people listening. I know we had fun. I just saw the time and it really did fly by. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But we'll do it again next week. Sounds good. Again, back to our normal time recording time after the kids go to bed. But until then, Jessica, bye. Bye.